here today with mandolin great Ronnie McCurry. Uh, Ronnie plays with his dad and his brother in the Grammy Award winning Dale McCurry Band. When not playing with his dad, he also fronts the traveling McCurries who have also won um, IBMA and Grammy Award nominations. Uh, Ronnie has also received the IBMA Mandolin Player of the Year for eight straight years. <laughs> so, Ronnie, uh, tell us how you got started playing. What is it like um, coming from such a musical family? Well, um, I uh, was around it, of course, all my life. Mm -hmm. So, I uh, grew up in Pennsylvania, and my dad uh, started his band in 66, and I was born in 67. So, uh, we were just around it all the time. Sure. And uh, I didn't start playing any instruments till I was nine. I started on the violin mm. in the orchestra mm -hmm. and played just a couple years and I uh, kind of laid it down because I was in the in between sports and music at the time sure. and uh, I saw uh, my, I went with my dad to New York City and he played at Lincoln Center with Bill Monroe yeah. it was a package thing and a couple other bands and uh, that night it clicked that I wanted to play the mandolin hmm. so that's when I started I was 13 and six months later, I was in the band. I turned 14. Wow, that's amazing. And uh, in a few years, it'll be 30 years. Wow. A few months, excuse me, it'll be 30 wow. years. That's <laughs> great. That's great. So that's, that's kind of how I started. So I've been in the band since 1981. Mm -hmm. Body and soul, body and soul. She loved me with body and soul. Ronnie, you've been around some of the bluegrass greats like uh, Bill Monroe. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us some funny stories, some anecdotes that you have to share. Well, let's see. I'll tell a, a quick one. In 1981 or 82, uh, we went to Bean Blossom with my dad, and I was just a teenager, young. And I was peeking out around the back of the stage uh, while he was on stage mm -hmm. that night for the closing set. I think it was Sunday or Saturday night. I cannot remember, but... Anyhow, uh, he was doing a medley. He came over and put his mandolin around my neck mm -hmm. and told me to come out. He said, come out here, boy. And uh, I went out and I played this medley. It was like Blue Moon of Kentucky and some gospel tunes. But I was 15, probably. Wow. And uh, that stuff sticks with you. Absolutely. <laughs> That's great. I was about nine years old my dad promoted a show in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. with Bill Monroe and uh, they came to the house for dinner and uh, my parents they had a home movie projector and I remember that uh, right before he left that I was in the yard with him and uh, just just the two of us mm -hmm. for some reason standing and he put his hat on my head Wow! and uh, quite memorable <laughs> Well, Ronnie, tell us um, about your long family friendship with Dave Grisman. Okay. Um, well, it goes back to probably 1966 when my father recorded with him. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I met him uh, when I was about 20 years old because he was living in California and we just didn't cross paths that much. But 
When I was 21, he gave me this mandolin. Mm. It's a Gilchrist mandolin. And uh, I played it and still play it, but uh, all that time. He's an incredible friend. Yeah. We co-produced a record together called the Bluegrass Mandolin Extravaganza, which mm -hmm. I'm very proud of. It showcased a lot of uh, what I consider the most influential mandolin players sure. living. And um, we still have a great friendship and played quite a bit together. Good, good. <laughs> about this beautiful mandolin you're holding. Okay, uh, this is a Lloyd Lore 73006, April 25th, 1923. Uh, it came out of uh, Mexico through Los Angeles to me, I think in 2006 mm -hmm. is when I got it. Um, really clean. Mm -hmm. Had to have some uh, little surgery done to it. The fingerboard was coming off and the, the back was opened up and had the master Steve Gilchrist fix it for me. Very nice. So, that's it. I'd like to pick you a little mandolin number that I wrote to get these fellas to help me out. It's one in town, the Hillcrest Drive. <laughs> Talk to us a little bit more about the Traveling McCurries. Yeah, that's, uh, that's an offshoot of our band, the Del McCurry Band. Mm -hmm. um, it was kind of a way for us to uh, get out from underneath our father's wing and be, sure. be prepared uh, for the years to come. Sure. Kinda. And, um, but what, what we do is uh, we, kinda, we can do a variety of things. We can play plugged in mm -hmm. and play electric and... Uh, or play just uh, an acoustic set or whatever we need to do. Yeah, that's great. And you mm -hmm. have a lot of tour dates coming up too, I understand. Yeah, we do. We do have quite a bit um, and a lot coming up in, uh, in 11. Good. So Good. <laughs> keeping us busy. Mm -hmm. We tried to start all over, but she left me again. Ronnie, tell us um, what's coming up in the future for you. What projects are you currently working on? All right. Um, well, we have uh, probably the next thing coming out is um, the Del McCurry Band with the Preservation Hall Jazz Band. Hmm. We combine the music together. Uh, that'll be out uh, around February sometime. And we have uh, Travel McCurry's and the Lee Boys, okay. Sacred Steel Band from Florida. Uh, that, that'll be coming out. And, of course, uh, we have Del Fest every Memorial Day weekend in Cumberland, Maryland. So, mm -hmm. come if you can. <laughs> well, Ronnie, thank you so much for taking the time um, to talk with us today. Um, your home is beautiful here thank in you. Hendersonville, Tennessee. <laughs> so, um, thank you so much for everything. Thank you, Erica. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. <laughs>